when making calls over the internet from your front end application to your service in the back end. Important to take into consideration the fact that it takes time to make that request. It takes time for the server that's processing the request to do that. It could be because it's calling an upstream database, or it could be because it's calling a downstream service or API of some other kind. Eventually, though, the request will be resolved. For example, the database of query will return, or the API will send its response back to the service. Then eventually the service will send the re response back to the client that it came from. This resolves the request response cycle. What happens to the database? Well, this is just to show that database queries take time and this should be considered as well. That's us reminded ourselves of the request response cycle and how long it takes to send and receive data across the internet. But how does that work in practice? We're gonna look at some code, code that runs on the client side in the web browser to try and get an understanding of how this all fits together. Running JavaScript in the browser, we have access to the fetch function. We give it the URL of a piece of data on the internet that we like to access, for example, our server, and it fetches that data. It starts the process of fetching a resource from the network, it earns a promise which is fulfilled once the response is available. The important thing to remember here is that fetch doesn't actually return the data we want. It returns a thing called a promise. Let's look at what a promise is on the MDN web docs. It's an object that represents the eventual completion or failure of an asynchronous operation. So, this isn't the, actually the piece of data that we want. It's a promise. But what the hell is a promise? To help explain this, I'm going to use an example of a burrito. Let's say you want to order a burrito from your favorite burrito place. You go in, you make the order, you pay for the order, and you're given a piece of paper. This piece of paper is going to be very important in our understanding of what promises are. You have your piece of paper, you go to wait. Your piece of paper is like an IOU. It's a thing that says, I am making you a burrito, but I promise I will give you it in the next few minutes when it's ready. Eventually the server comes back with your burrito and you exchange your promise note for your burrito. This is how promises work. Let's jump back to the code and see it in action. The value returned from the fetch is your promise. It's your little ticket to say, I'm going to give you this when I've got it ready. It comes back from the fetch immediately. Let's look at the code in a bit more detail. The fetch executes instantly, but that doesn't mean to say that it makes the request instantly. The promise is returned. That's the object that's on const resp. So technically, it's not a response. Technically, it's a promise. So let's just update our code to make sure that we've got the right names for things. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Let's console log the promise and take a look at it and see what's inside. If I can open the promise, it shows us something about pending, promise state, pending. Well, let's have a look at the documentation. MDN reference, promise. Okay, let's have a look and see what it says. Pending, initial state, neither fulfilled nor rejected. Build, meaning that the operation was successful. Or rejected, meaning the operation has failed. Promises can be in three states. Pending, fulfilled, and rejected. We'll look back at our burrito shop example to try and get a better understanding of how those things are. Pending is the one we've already discussed. It's the waiting for the burrito. Fulfilled is the, yeah, here you go. Here's your burrito. I've got it. Thanks very much. And rejected is something's went wrong. The cooker's broke, stove's broken. A, we're unable to give you your burrito. With that in mind, let's look back at the code and look back at the promise pending. Looking at the documentation for promise, there's a method here that's quite interesting. The then method. Let's look at that in the context of our code. To do that, we'll need a callback function. Let's make a callback function and log out the response object that that gives us. And then we'll use the then method from the documentation and we'll pass it that callback. The then method accepts a function as an argument. When we pass a function into another function, it's called a callback. Let's try and understand why this works this way. 
When we dispatch the request, we're given the promise to keep track of the progress of that request. Eventually, it will resolve the response object. But how do we know when? We can't keep asking the promise, is it fulfilled, is it fulfilled yet, and so on. This is why the promise needs to tell us when it's fulfilled. And it does that by calling the function passed into the then. Finally, our promise is fulfilled. And when it's fulfilled, the value that it resolves to is conveniently passed into our callback as the first argument, which we've named RESP. We've now successfully used fetch to request some data from a remote server, and we have some sort of response. But we're not done yet. We still need to handle that response before we're able to get the data that we're actually expecting to see. Switching back to the MDN docs, we'll search for a response to learn a bit more about what we can do with this object. Looking into the docs for response and scrolling down to the methods section, there's a few methods here that we find useful. In most cases, the response will be in a JSON format. So we'll need the .json method to get that. We quickly notice that the JSON returns a promise. Wait, what? Another promise? Okay, let's not panic too much. Let's go back to the code. The JSON method we want to use to get our data doesn't immediately give us our data. It gives us a promise. So we need to handle that exactly the same way we've handled the promise returned by the fetch. As an aside, and for some context, promises are not unique to using fetch. They're usually given for any operation that needs to happen asynchronously. The easiest way to remember that, in the case of using JavaScript, is for any operation that takes some time, it's most likely going to be an asynchronous operation. In a lot of cases, but not always, asynchronous operations are used when doing I.O. In this case, though, we're not doing I.O. We're using the JSON method on the response to convert the bytes that have came across the wire to JSON. Since it will take an unknown amount of time to make that conversion, it's treated as an asynchronous operation. This is a good idea, as if we have a huge JSON, then the application isn't blocked waiting for that to compute. Let's look back at the code. We'll need to call the .json method on the response object. So let's do that. Let's give the name of the variable that holds the JSON promise, data prom. As we learned earlier, to use a promise, we need to do a dot then in it. So let's do that. Remember that the then method takes a function as an argument. But this time, let's shortcut it and just pass the function in directly without saving it first. The promise from the dot JSON is resolved with the JSON data as its argument. So we can just use that parameter data and then log it out. And that's it. We've managed to make the fetch, handle the response, and then convert it all to JSON asynchronously. Though this code could be cleaner. Let's now identify places where we don't need variables and clean those up. Since fetch returns a promise, we can just do a dot then in it. And because dot JSON returns a promise, we can do a dot then straight after that too. The final code is really clean. I really hope you've learned some stuff about how to handle requests and responses in JavaScript and have a deeper understanding of fetch and promises too. If you found this useful, please stick a comment below and of course, please, please like and subscribe. The Quora Career is a tech community for helping those in the earlier years of their career in technology. We will have more videos like these, so subscribe if you want to get in on the action early. Thank you very much for watching.